what seemed to have changed in recent years was a, a funding ecosystem that hadn't been there in the past or as strong as it was in Silicon Valley, but uh, all sorts of VCs coming this way now. When it comes to, to your company, uh, you've created uh, something you know, virtually overnight that is a real challenger in the payment system. What does it take, though, to get some of these companies from being successful unicorns to, to the 100 billion euro mark that Macron's talking about? Um, yeah, it's true. So we had the VCs that invested in us was American capital coming to Europe, but that all ha already happened in 2011. So that's quite a number of years ago that that trend started, that the successful US VCs were setting up in Europe. Um, what it takes is, is um, we had a company before and we were much more modest in our ambition. Uh, so what it takes is also a group of entrepreneurs that, that doesn't want to stop. So a group of entrepreneurs, which feels that, 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 that there's an opportunity to really build that global company. And sometimes I think that if I look at my peer group, uh, I now see many more entrepreneurs that feel uh, that they can build a company out of Europe with global ambitions, whereas before maybe Europe was a little bit more modest. And just by way of reference to the audience uh, today, your market cap at uh, 58.4 billion euros, Peter. I want to pick up on the expansion as we talk about growing the business, because just in, in uh, recent uh, days, you've managed to get this U.S. branch license. What are you aiming to achieve with that? It was stated that this will enhance uh, those U.S. activities and operations. But what does this practically give you that you couldn't do before this license was uh, uh, sent out to you? Yeah, well, if you look at how we build our company, the first region where we were fully licensed as a bank was Europe. And we see that it brings us operational advantages, but also um, the basis to develop more products. Um, and we felt that that's, that that's the most powerful model. There, there we feel that we can outperform what others can offer. So for us, it was a logical choice to also apply for that in the US. So we're extremely happy that all that work uh, uh, has, has now led to having a license. Um, overnight, nothing will change. It has operational advantages, but indeed, if you look at enhanced services, this is the right basis to do that. Peter, um, you're a technology business and people are excited about you, but does a price earnings ratio of 223 scare you? Because that implies an awful lot of expectation about what your business can ultimately deliver. Yeah, if you look, if you look at, at, at where we stand is we focus on how do we further want to develop the company and uh, we share our plans and then it's up to the market, of course, uh, to value us. Um, if you look at the trends in payments, if you look at, at the tailwinds, uh, which there are with the move from, um, from cash to cashless, with uh, you saw that the pandemic has, has, sped, has led to more speed in trends which you could already see. So the trends that stores which would only have service, a physical store, are now moving into uh, online or both models. Um, if you look at how, how companies start to sell more internationally, I think there are certain trends in this industry um, which, uh, which give tailwinds.